mother right here, right here again. It's my sister, my grandmother. County, Maryland, and um, I've been out here in Philly for maybe like two weeks now. I'm on the streets as well, I don't have much, but I do have tools and resources for the other members of the community that also struggle with addictions, um, you know, loss of jobs, uh, I mean, no shelter, you know what I'm saying? It's hard for people out here in the city sometimes, especially when we have addictions. We all have addictions. No matter what they may be, they don't always have to be drugs. They could be many of things. You know what I'm saying they could be anything: sex, food. People, people have all types of addictions, and I don't. This is it's really, really, really messed up to judge anyone for anything that they choose to do with their life. But you also have to remember that these people have a choice to make, and that choice you cannot make for them. They have to want these things for themselves. They don't want it for themselves. There's nothing that you can do to give it to them. And now oftentimes, as like, you know, people, a lot of times people like, they try to like, they like to come out their their nice little fancy houses and come out in the community and talk to people that live on the streets and do drugs about what it is to how to take care of themselves and how they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. A lot, a lot of them pass a lot of judgment on these people. Now, coming from somebody who's been in these situations and still currently am at the time, I'm, I'm also, like, I'm trying to work on myself, but at the same time, I know what it is to be out here and to have these, these types of addictions. And for a person that doesn't, it's really hard for them to kind of try and sit down and relate to them. And a person that does this shit is not going to want to sit here and listen to you talk about your, your minute problems about... I mean, most people that come out in the community don't really have problems. The problems that they do have, only reason they come out in the community is because they see, they have, you know, a guilty conscience. But, I mean, I come out in the community because I know that these people have these addictions and when you leave these kind of lifestyles, a lot of times you pick up very unhealthy, unsanitary habits along the way. A lot of these people, they're not, I mean, some of, most of them are not very sanitary, they're clean. Okay, yet again, we live on the streets. But I reach out to the community every day. I, I, I try and show them ways everywhere, every state you go to, they have places that you can go to take shots. You know, there's all types of resources that the government and state provides for people that don't have anything. People are getting $7,000 unemployment, $600 a week. Some people out here that work don't even make $600 a week. So there's no excuse for these people to be like, you know, out here living the way they live. Now, I do not judge them because I've been there before. You have no idea, like, a lot of times what these people go through mentally. Now, drugs, man, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a whole nother situation. It's, it's not like, you know, smoking weed and popping pills. Like, people think, oh, yeah, I'm, nah, you can't compare. Now, not that anyone's demons are, you know, more, you know, I can try to look for a word for it. Everyone's demons are different, you know what I mean? And people handle them differently, so it's never okay to minimize the other's problems based on the ones that you feel as if you have in your own life. People come from all different places in the world, and in some of these places, the things that they do, that's the normal. I was just living out in Craigsville, Virginia, man. Everybody out there, the entire Augusta County. Math. Other people would be like, what? But, hey, listen, it's all 
it's not okay to have these problems, but it's not not okay. But you gotta always keep your priorities in line. The government offers all of these programs, assistance, showers, food, 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 it's everywhere. People give away stuff everywhere. All you gotta do is look it up. Libraries, free internet access. Ask a person to look up a shelter for you on their phone, man. There's no reason that you should be out here. But now what I do say to the people that are out here is if you're gonna do what you're gonna do, I'm gonna try and help you do it correctly. A lot of times I often see people out here struggling, bleeding, fucking their body up, man. Like destroying, destroying themselves. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like for real, like I'm not lying to you guys. I've been, I've been out here. I've had, I've had a serious problem for quite some time now, but I've gained control of my, of my like, I don't know, priorities, I guess, if you want to say. Yeah, I still live on the streets, but every day, it brings me great joy to see that I can help another person go through what I once went through alone. Cause all, I mean, if I had somebody to help me go through that, man, I would have been in a lot better situation. But I come out here every day, man. I hand out free needles, free alcohol swabs. Some of these people will pick them up off the ground and use them. Man, it's crazy out here. People contract Hep C from themselves and they don't even know that that's possible, man. And it's very, very, very dangerous when you lead this lifestyle because you develop very unsanitary habits along the way. So I come out here and for those people that don't really care to listen to me, tell them about the resources and stuff. Hey, if you're going to do it, do it properly. There's no reason you should be out in the middle of the road doing this stuff. Go and, you know, have some decency about yourself because the last thing you want is to one day try to clean up and go for a job interview and someone remember you as that person in the street shooting you know, up. That's not, that's not a good image in, your, in a person's mind. People see me every day and they, they think I lie, I'm lying to them when I tell them that I have these same problems and addictions that these people out here that have no teeth in their mouth have. People out here that look like they've been rolling around in dirt. There's no reason, man. A lot of oftentimes people lose themselves. People lose their relationship. People burn bridges. Some people, like, man, I see people have relationships where their their significant others feel, you know, unimportant. Not, they don't want to give them any type of a sexual attention or physical attention. They don't pay them any mind because they find these stimulants out here. And it's kind of like replaces sex, you know. And so a lot of times women get felt left out, so they join in. And a lot of times, man, look, man, it, it's I've seen it all. It goes downhill from there you blowing me off i'm trying to help you get the tools and resources you need to to become financially stable because no matter what these people say to me when i walk down the street there's nothing that's gonna make me not want to help them there's nothing that brings me more joy than to, to see that i can help another person being a such being that i've been in a situation where i've had no one to help me and nobody to like really like, you know, guide me. I kind of guided myself along the way. A lot yeah, of times people don't have a, the ability to guide themselves based off of the, the environments they've grown up into. And I, I, I come out here, I speak to the community every day. I tell them, you know, for no, for no matter what problem you could ever have in life, whether it be big or small, there's only three solutions, man. People, places, and things. A, you change the people you be around, the places you go, and the things that you do, man. 180, and, I, and that, I promise you, no matter what the problem is, and that's a fact, that's, that's proven by science. Yeah, okay, science is kind of like off sometimes, but that's true stuff. Think of it, any problem changes to people, places and things, I mean, there's no more any reason to have a problem. So I come out here, I help these people, and a lot of times, well, most of the times, they show me much respect, but a lot of them, they try to, they try to take advantage of me. They try and like, just use me for what I got, but it's okay, I've had people like, I, I don't know why to you, man. I'm not, I'm not a saint. I've sent people to get drugs for me, all types of stuff. People I don't even know anything. They haven't came back. See them later that day, and I'll still buy them something to eat if I have it. If I don't, hey, man, God bless. And I, I hope that one day you learn that when you burn these bridges, sometimes they're not, they're not able to be rebuilt. And a lot of times, people often discriminate against the people that they need to ask for help. A lot of people don't want to ask for help. They'd rather go and try and rob and steal and, and kill and uh, that's unnecessary, man. There's so many people out here like me that are willing to help you. Now, most people that look at me, they don't think that I'm that kind of person. 
Most people out here look at me like, oh, man, he's probably the police. He's out here asking us where to find meth. What? I'm like, nah, man, I'm not the police, man. I do this shit, too. I just do it on my own time. I don't sit out here while people are walking their children down the streets. And that's not, nah, nah. Presentation is key. If you present yourself properly, you can get anything you ever want in life. I'm not, and, man, it's a lot going on out here, man. Methamphetamine, man. I do meth, crack, whatever. I shoot up crack, smoke it. I shoot up meth. It's whatever, man. I do a lot of drugs. But as of recently, I've started to, you know, calm down a lot from where I used to be. When I lost my grandmother, I lost my grandmother two days after Christmas, my first year home. That destroyed me. I was in a, I was in like a like a really long relationship at the time, and that destroyed my relationship as well because my significant other found out that I was doing drugs as well, and I was hiding it from her. And uh, man, I ended up with nothing. I ended up in jail my 18th birthday. I ended up on the streets. Soon after, I ended up in the hospital. August 10th, 2018. I always come out the door, and I always look presentable, though. I'm never going to come out the door looking like I'm struggling, because Absolutely. there's no reason for that. There's places that you can go. Free clothes. All these clothes were given to me, free of charge. You got to do is go to a church and ask for help. They'll give you clothes, food, etc. There's places to go. I got on fresh stuff. People on the streets, they, they go and they go in these places, they steal stuff. I'll buy it from them. Whatever. I mean, there's places that you can go to get this stuff for free, though, man. There's no reason you should be out here smelling bad, looking bad. Because you're smelling bad, looking bad, I mean, you're going to feel bad. You're all reflections of each other. So you see everybody else out here smelling bad, looking bad, you just begin to think that it's okay. It's, once that deli the message is delivered, well, it's something that you can't really unsend. Because now, I mean, why unsend it? Everybody around house looks like that, so why not? Honestly, man, I had a great childhood, man. My grandparents, they, they took me out of a, a rough situation when I was five years old, man. And I thank them, bro. I, I really do. And for real, this is my grandmother right here, man. She died, she died two days after Christmas, my, my, like, my first year at home. And it destroyed me. It took something from me that I, that I don't think I'll ever get back, honestly, for real. Because I always thought about that somebody would always be there, no matter what. I always pictured her at my wedding, my, 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 my graduation. I just came home. I wanted to prove everybody wrong. I wanted to, I wanted to, man, I wanted to make my grandmother proud, you know what I mean? And she didn't even get to see me get my GED, you know what I mean? And that shit broke. If she was watching this video right now, the message I like somewhere is that I love her and that I'm sorry for all the times that I fought her about the things that she, um, she always tried to steer me in the right direction. And I always, I fought her hand over foot. I had a photo hand over fist, man. And I, I, I wish I didn't, man. I wish that I actually listened to, you know, some of the messages she tried to deliver to me. I always took it as her being hard on me and trying to bash me. Nah, man, she wanted me to grow up to be strong and to, to be able to hold my own. Because the world we live in, man, look around us, man. Shit is crazy. How much money do you spend a day on your drug use? Honestly, no more than 50 bucks, about 20 to 50 dollars. Now, I, on some days, it depends on the drug, honestly, man. Sometimes you go to different communities, you can't find certain things. Crack, there's never an end. You know, I don't care how much money you have, you're never going to be satisfied. But I still do it sometimes, man. I find myself sitting, at, sitting out and burnt out somewhere, man, looking like, Damn, why'd I do that? I could have got a hotel room. Now I'm sitting outside, burnt out. Now I don't even have my weed because I done just traded my one, my, my only bag of weed to calm myself down for the night. I traded it for something that was going to burn me out. It's not funny, man, but I look back on it, I'm like, damn, that shit's stupid. I mean, supporting my habit, most, honestly, believe it or not, most of the times when I come out of the community and I show people love, you have very few that may show love back and a lot of times when the dealers see me out here doing this for the community some of them hate because they feel like i'm blocking their their sales but a lot of them man they just give it to me i don't sometimes i don't pay nothing for it or i'll come out and i'll i'll just like hey you guys i'll give you a you know a box of clean needles for whatever i want and, you know, they'll do it. But I also will let them know, hey, listen, don't be stingy with them. Just because a person doesn't have $2 for a point doesn't mean that they should feel it necessary to go and pick up one off the ground. That's terrible. Some people can try to help see themselves from just using the same 
needles behind themselves. It's very dangerous out here. And I say to those who are in relationships, relationships with people that are in the streets or that go out and play, as we may call it, or you know, people that get high in these kind of ways, especially people that, that use needles, man, it's very unsafe for one, for one that does not to be in a relationship for one, with one who does. Because a lot of times they'll bring home something that you might not be able to get rid of. Because a lot of times, man, these men out here do, it's sad to say, man, some of these men out here, they, they go out here and they do all types of crazy shit. They call it gay for pay out there and where I'm from. And uh, man, people out here, they, they, they degrade themselves. They, they, they make, bro, they just, they lose themselves. And there's so many resources out here that are available to the people that have nothing. It's more resources for people that have nothing than people that have everything. So do you keep in anyway, touch with your family? Uh, as a matter of fact, it's funny you ask that question because I just I just called my grandfather yesterday, man. For a little while, man, I had a lot of resentment towards him because when my grandmother passed away, he kind of like, he was going through something. And I understood what he was going through, but I was going through something as well. And the way I used to cope with it at the time, I wasn't doing really hard drugs at the time. I was, I was just smoking a lot of weed, man. He didn't like that stuff because he was a recovering addict himself. And it made, he says, you know, it pushed him towards wanting to jump out there again as well. And, you know, I fought him, I fought him about it a little bit. Point is, um, you know, I gave him a hard time, and a hard time is what we were already having at the moment. And I, I mean, I've done a lot of things that I regret, but at the same time, a lot of the mistakes that I've made, I know that if I did not make those mistakes when I made them, I would not be able to be in the place that I'm at right now. Not that I'm in the greatest place ever, but mentally to have the knowledge of being able to know certain things about certain situations, you wouldn't be able to have the knowledge unless you go through them yourself. Somebody can tell you about something, oh, the worst that thing, eh, that's okay, whatever. Somebody can tell you all day long don't touch it, it's hot. You're still gonna touch it just to see how hot it is. Most, you know, eight out of 10. That's because, you know, not because we're stupid, but we wanna know. To be uninformed is to be unaware. Nobody wants to be unaware. And a lot of times, like I was saying, back to this situation with females and men, men alike, you know, vice versa. A lot of times I see others get in a relationship. A lot of times people get in relationships with people that do drugs and they don't understand. They're like, they get, they get felt left out or left alone. They sit at home all day or all night and they stare at the door waiting for this significant other to come home. They, they go missing for days at a time, hours at a time. And a lot of times they, they don't understand. I'm like, like, why these people? Like, they think they're out, you know, fucking off. Meanwhile, they're really probably just out getting high. Then they come home and pff, mad, upset, pissed off. Yeah, I know, bro. I, come, I used to come home pissed off every night because now my money's gone and I'm still right back where I started. The bottom. And it's, it's, it's sad to say, man, that I, I still go out here and do this stuff. But honestly, man, it's not excusable, man. Like one day I hope to be able to be at a point in my life where I don't need these things. I don't need them, Paul. They're not needs. I don't, where I don't want these things around me. Now, a lot of times people say, oh, man, when I get out of jail, I'm not going I'm not gonna to use no more. Or when I get out of rehab, I'm just not going to go around people anymore. It's not, that shouldn't be the idea, man. When you are trying to recover the... The hardest challenge of all is when that when that uh, that substance comes and taps you on the shoulder and says, "Hey, what's up? You wanna come play?" Also, I do give out water and stuff too, because a lot of these drugs they leave you dehydrated, they leave you, um, you know, sleep deprivation, dehydration, lack of food, leave you very fatigued, very weak. You gotta always remember to, you know, you go in here buying soda, you're smoking meth, you're buying soda, you're doing, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm telling you. My favorite childhood memory, um, as a child, my favorite childhood memory was probably going to be, um, let me think. I mean, amongst very many, I say my grandparents uh, taking me to Disney World. I loved it, but they hated my reaction to it because I was already introduced to the ideas that, you know, Santa Claus is not real, you know. That, that, that these cartoon characters are not real. So I'm out here at Disney World, I'm pointing out at all these costumes, like, oh, that's fake, that's fake. If I had three wishes, man, honestly, um, if I had three wishes in this world, it would be for everybody to just get along. There's nothing I hate more, worse than a person who's, who's racially motivated, always wants to find a racial excuse for why everything's wrong. There's nothing that any other color person did to cause you to be out here on the streets. Own that shit. Like, man up. 
the first step to solving your problems is to first admit that you have one. And if you don't admit you have one, shit, you live in a denial. People often ask me, out here on these streets, doing drugs, hey, you think I have a problem? What do you think? You tell me. But a lot of times, man, you can't. These people have to learn these things for themselves. And I hope, my, my wish is that people one day learn to just take responsibility for what it is that they've done to cause the things that happen in life. Two, my, I would probably, I would wish for more compassionate people, but on a more moderate level, because if we had too many compassionate people out here like me, well, everybody would be broke and I wouldn't be because of drugs. I'm not broke because of drugs. I'm broke because shit happens. I was, you know, I do, I do little dumb stuff and I get in trouble and I take off and I go here and go there and I can't find jobs. I find a job or, you know, I start getting high. I start to slack off, man. Listen, there's so much money out here, man. And you don't have to do anything illegal to get it, man. People are really, I know a lot of people that are really willing to help anyone if they just ask them. So many people are scared to ask and never receive the help. Now listen, thirdly, my probably third wish would be, I wouldn't wish anyone back from the dead because I've heard that's went wrong many times before, not to be funny. But um, I would wish for like peace. I want everybody to get along. There's no reason why people should be out here fighting over a pair of $300 shoes. It's ridiculous. You guys are fighting over his shoe. Meanwhile, Jordan's in, in his crib just kicking back, laughing. Haha, <laughs> look at the people fight. I was gonna say the N-word because that's what he once said. Honestly, he, he he didn't even make the shoes for the black community. I didn't make them for you poor people. I made them for the white folks, but that's not the point. The point is people fighting so much things to fight over out here. When I think we could just all come together, we could all like, like look at this city right now. If we all came together and did what I do. <laughs> And shit could look just like the white people's stuff. Not to be racist, there is no race but the human race. And that is, I would believe that's the day, the day I die. You know what I'm saying? I, being, I come from a bilingual family. My mother's white, my dad's black. A lot of people look at me like, oh man. But listen, man, they're like, oh man, these white people aren't gonna get help me. I mean, I get, I get more white people to help me every day than I do black, honestly. It's not about race, it's about compassion. It's about a person and where they come from and, and how they were raised. And there's no person that's, that's the same. You can never look at a person and judge a book by its cover. Everyone is different. They look at me like, oh, no. They think I'm the dealer. No, I'm the consumer. They don't ever know it, though. And a lot of people out here, man, they just listen sometimes to, to the things that I try and share with them. They could be in a lot better places in life. Not saying that my words are the only words that can do that. All I got to do is use their mind and just... Think, be creative. Y'all can create all these fancy ways to get five bucks to get a hit. Create all these, create a fancy way to get five bucks five times and you get your room, Airbnb, 26 bucks a night. Man, come on, now it's not that hard. You okay. can't be out here like this. My message to the world is to, I hope that everyone around us one day wakes up and sees what they're doing to each other. These people are destroying their own businesses. Why? You're, you're, you're now you have to walk 13 blocks instead of four to get to the store. That's just stupid, man. Come on, tighten up. Stop letting social media, the news, let's stop letting society project these ideas upon you that infect your mind to think that it's okay to do these things. Because at the end of the day, when you do these things, you're not harming anyone but yourselves. The government is sitting back laughing at you guys. Like, haha. If we spend like just half as much time or focus on thinking about these free things that we have out here for us to, you know, use for our advantage. As, if we thought half as hard about those as we did about asking the person for a dollar to get something to eat when you're really about to go fuck off with it, man, you can have an empire by now, man. There's so many things out here, so much money out here. It's so much. And all you gotta do is just ask people. If you're uninformed, ask. I say, hey, look, go on the IRS, fill it out. They're like, what, how you do that? I'll take you to do it. They'd rather go catch chase and hit. That's not the right idea. A lot of people, they get stuck in these ways of living and it becomes to a point where they don't even want to live in a house anymore because they've become so accustomed to this. And that's not okay, but hey, 
I can't change another person's way of thinking, but I do hope that speaking to this brother here today, I was able to open his mind to the fact that there are some people out here that are in these situations that actually do care and they actually do these things unconditionally, man. I don't want anything from this shit. People always say, oh man, you just want something from me. You want to get in my pants. No, I don't. You ain't took a shower in weeks, baby. I just want to get you to where you don't have to sleep worrying about if somebody's gonna mess with you, you know? I want people to be safe. And I also want people to put more attention towards their family, their kids, their, their, their I wanna, I, me personally, I wanna live, lead, lead a normal life again. I used to go out to the movie theater. I used to go hang out with my friends. And it came to a point where my idea of getting, having fun was sitting in the house getting high, picking at the carpet, man. It's just not fun. It's not cool. I wanna get back out of here. I wanna, you know, so many things I wanna do, man, but I know I can't do these things if I'm still out here doing this. I am on Instagram, but give, give me I, a handle so if anybody wanna you know reach sure. out to you, they can you know send you a message. Um, I think it's uh, f l y dot s h x t dot only. It's a very old page. I haven't posted in a while. I don't really do social media because as I learned along the way, man, social media, the news, it's all a way of just infecting your mind to 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 just you know push you into thinking these things that they want you to think it's going to cause you to go and mess up your community. I don't, I try to keep it out of my mind. I try to keep it out of my way. I don't want people keeping tabs on me. No, I'm not no tweaker. Now my final words would be to man, like I hope that this message was, you know, beneficial to someone out there today. And if it wasn't, hey, I am going to walk away from here with a smile on my face knowing that I was able to deliver a message to someone, whether they accept that message or not, that's their choice, but I do hope that you take heed and, and to understand that there are things out here in place for people like us. All you gotta do is stay focused. Sometimes drugs take, drugs take us off our direct path, but man, get back on track. Don't be sitting around 40 years old wishing you could have did this and wish you could have did that. Do it while you still can. The world is, is falling around us. We got very much time.